and the player starting to find her rhythm for the Adelaide Lightning. Kelly Wilson for Ali Wilson. Back out for Kelly Wilson, the veteran. Most WNBL games. And that's a terrific left-hand finish from Alicia Froling, who steps up and gets Bendigo's first points. At the other end, quick fire from Talbot. Misfires. End-to-end -end basketball early stages. It is probably an early shot in the shot clock. I don't know that that was great shot selection by Talbot. She'll have a second crack here for Mansfield. Great patience shown. Went inside hoping for Whittle. Gets Whittle in and out. But Monroe was there. Such great height. Can it be third time lucky? She loses control. But she will head to the charity stripe to shoot a couple. In those contests, the game is so much about what you do in the break. So here where the shot attempt goes up, you've got to wall up just like Alicia Froling is doing. But then you've got to make contact with Munro's body and try to push and gain a metre of space so the fall of the ball comes in your favour and you don't give her two and three and four attempts at it. Jacinta Munro, so far in this WNBL season, seven of 16 from the... Sorry, nine of 16 from the charity stripe. Great to have her part of the Adelaide Lightning lineup. Great WNBA experience. This is the second. Yeah. Who else but Annalie Maley waiting to bring down the board? Maley guarded by Marina Whittle. Two players that know each other quite well. Kelly Wilson kept control, kicked it out, but. Straight down the throat of Lauren Mansfield. We know she's been so hot from beyond the arc. Almost turned it over there. Good hand in there from Ali Wilson. Whittle goes to work. KG23 comes up with the steal. Maley streams forward. We're straight into the fans sitting in the front row. Takes a couple out. And Mansfield almost did turn it over again. Catch your breath. Looks like a game of tennis going from one end of the court to the other. Maley still checking on the fans there in the front row. She gets back out there and misses the two. Talbot spinning, scoring, all class, Steph Talbot. Yeah, Steph Talbot's tough to stop off the bounce, and if she can find your body, she goes into that spin move, not unlike... Kelly Wilson just did there. Griffin, so tough and determined. Every time you step out onto the court, you know what Kelsey Griffin is, is going to bring to the floor. She will head to the line to shoot two. And she's so smart, so she's a thinker out on the floor too. So just a, a possession or two ago, she waited for Marina Whittle to have the ball and commit to her dribble. And often when Marina goes to the bounce, she's such a threat getting to the basket that she's able to beat the immediate matchup in front of her. KG coming across and helping and getting a hand to it. A terrific service to the UC Caps. A couple of championships there. Kelsey Griffin, but she's back with Bendigo, who she had so much success with previously. And she hits both free throws, the three-time WNBL Grand Final MVP. And that is a turnover commuted by Adelaide. Kelly Wilson, happy to accept it. Here is Griffin, four-time WNBL champion. Kelly Wilson in fact. Ali Wilson draws the contact before... That left-hand attempt. And such a presence that KG brings to that Bendigo lineup. I mean, you see her holding court there in the huddle. She's got winning experience. She's been able to recreate winning experience in multiple different places now. So for her to be able to give the team some feedback and, and lead them on the court as a, a voice uh, is just as impressionable as what she's able to contribute as a player. Adelaide, uh, Ali Wilson has had Couple of, uh, couple of stints with the uh, Adelaide Lightning as well. Looking at the year back in 2014, I've had, she's had her knee injuries over the years. Again, some sloppy work from the Adelaide Lightning in their backcourt. Another turnover is committed. Can they pounce Bendigo? 
Ali Wilson for three, knocks it down. They're making some noise in Mildura tonight. Talbot, Monroe, Mansfield gets the screen from Bell, works her way into, into the perimeter and banks it in off the glass. Griffin at the other end, in rhythm, knocks down the triple. How many times have we seen that play between Wilson and Griffin? I feel like you could make a statue. Different colours, same results for Kelly Wilson and Kelsey Griffin. Talbot at the other end, she responds with a triple and after both teams struggled to hit some shots early, they found their rhythm. Maley, Kelly Wilson, Griffin, Ali Wilson, Working around the perimeter. She pulls the trigger from deep. And Alicia Froling almost came up with it. There's that hustle from Annalie Maley, who just wanted the ball more than anyone else. Keeps it alive for Bendigo. Gives them a fresh 14 seconds. Quick hands from Griffin for Alicia Froling. Tough left-hand attempt. Miss Fires. Bell comes up with the rebound. Whittle. Takes on Froling. Doesn't get the love off the glass that she was after, but came up with the offensive rebound in the end. Talbot loses control. Kelsey Griffin will bring it back in for Bendigo. and <laughs> gives a high five to the fans in the front row. It's a frenetic pace to start this one. I don't know where to look. So many stars both on the court and certainly a couple to come off the bench as well. Both teams will be right, relying pretty heavily on their starting fives tonight. No, Izzy Borlace is having a terrific season. Looking forward to seeing her in action for Adelaide as Munro gets the rebound after the Kelly Wilson miss. Mansfield puts up the three, falling short. I don't know about that terrific 7-7 game from deep. She had it a few weeks ago. Griffin in the corner. Hit the deck after she, sh she shot it. No foul called by the referee. Bell has a really good look at three, and she misfires. And Talbot comes up with the offensive rebound. Crashed into Ali Wilson. Off hands. And Bendigo get the ball back with four minutes and one second on the clock. And that's the trade-off by playing at such a, a tempo all of the time. Um, you get early shots within the shot clock. Some may argue that that's the highest percentage look that you'll get because you're relatively open and you'd accept that at any other, any other time in the shot clock. But sometimes you get a rush three, then you get an offensive rebound, rush kick out pass, and you cough up possession. So it's the trade-off that you have to decide when you're a coach. Do you want the benefit of this uh, at the risk of that? Maley. You know how much she's added to her game the past couple of years, uh, couple of seasons, particularly the jump shot. Munro underneath received it from Ball Ace. Has a look on that left hand and knocks down the mid-range two to tie the scores up. Maley. She's such a dominant force on the court, Annalie Maylin, only getting better with each game she plays. And she's always a threat, and that's the, the thing that makes her really difficult to defend. So she's got, now, that it, as you mentioned, the three-point shot that's knocking down for her. Um, she's tough to stay in front of when she goes to the bounce, but then she relentlessly goes to the offensive glass and keeps possessions alive for her team. And that's where you see those um, re offensive rebounding outputs from her that are like 10 and 12 and 13. Part of the FIBA Asia Cup lineup recently that won a, a bronze medal for the Opals. Since that she's got a lot more Opals appearances in her career, Annalie Maley. Lost control there, did ball lays Kelly Wilson. Those quick hands on display. And smart and can anticipate where the ball's about to go. There's a saying in coaching that the strong take from the weak, but the smart take from the strong, and that's that sums up Kelly Wilson. A big cubulo on the court for the Adelaide Lightning as well as Borlays with Whittle and Mansfield 
Giving a rest. Here's Tessa Levy checking into the game. One of those championships early days with the Bendigo Spirit alongside Kelly Wilson. Maley comes up with an offensive rebound. Quintessentially puts it back in for two. Bell looking for Munro. Didn't quite get there. And Tessa Levy's got ample space. Try to go behind the back. And Bendigo were adamant that that was going their way, but Adelaide will have the sporting from the baseline. Yeah, unlucky there. But you can feel the momentum start to shift in Bendigo's favour. The Lightning need a, a basket here just to stabilise. Kibilo. Ball lace. For Kibilo. Lost control. Trying to drive her way into the arc. And let off for the Bendigo Spirit. See, if your easy ball lays in that position, you've got to create some more space so that Kelly Wilson can't help on the dribbler without any penalty. Here is Kelly Wilson. Goes to work. Maley. Got it by Talbot. The two reigning, the two latest MVPs going at it. Can't quite get her own offensive rebound there, Annalie Maley. And Talbot will bring the ball up the floor with two minutes left in this third quarter. Up first quarter, rather. Bell pulls the trigger, knocks it down. That was beautiful to watch. And they needed that one. Kirsten Bell. With her first triple of the game, Annalie Maley at the other end starting to find her groove. Responds for Bendigo. Bell lobs it in. Beautifully timed and lob pass for Talbot, who gets her own offensive rebound and puts it in. And the stars are for both teams having a big influence on this game early. And just the hustle efforts for mine, especially from Adelaide, uh, I think that's a sixth offensive rebound. Oh, Annalie Maley. What a delight to watch. Rice smile from Annalie as that three drops. And she's got a game high nine points. Bell goes to work, gets the lucky roll. High quality basketball from both teams. 50.4 seconds remaining. And the pace really hasn't deteriorated at any stage. It's been high octane from the uh, from the tip. Absolutely, that's the best way to describe it. Actually, it'll be interesting to see how much of a threat um, Annalie Maley continues to be, or whether there's an adjustment from the Lightning here, a bit more of an urgency to get out to her. From a defensive point of view, what is the best way to play Annalie Maley? Uh, let down her tires before she leaves home and drives to the arena. <laughs> Uh, no, in, in all seriousness, uh, very, very tough to stop, especially with the addition of the three-point shot and the yep. relentlessness um, for possession. But whoever you have that guards her, you need to have like-for-like like athleticism uh, and you need to be literally at the ability not to rest mentally in any possession because there's a break in the game where a ball's in the air and she's cutting to the rim or she's crashing the offensive glass or she's uh, she cuts out of bounds and then she tries to wedge her way in um, underneath you to get possession of the ball so you've always got to be switched on and you almost have that sole job um, and no help responsibility defensively kelly wilson off target but kelsey griffin there to bring down the offensive rebound and the perfect pass put it on a platter for kelly wilson just going back before, Bell was called for tech foul, so that was why Annalie Maley had a look at the free throw line there. He was able to hit, so Bendigo with a 23 to 18 lead. Tessa Levy on the floor there, getting a hand in there. Lightning in the bonus. Spirit with two fouls in this first quarter. Here's Borlase. Nicely timed pass there for Brook. Talbot with terrific determination. Off the offensive glass, gets it to go. Another offensive rebound for Steph Talbot. And a heads-up play by Borlase to get fingertips to that ball. 
and seven offensive rebounds to four in favour of the Adelaide Lightning. Munro's got three offensive rebounds as well for Adelaide. As time ticks down, and timely block there as Kelly Wilson attempted to put it up. But an entertaining contest, as we expected, in Mildura between the Bendigo Spirit and the Adelaide Lightning. And it's a 23-20 advantage in favour of Bendigo over the Adelaide Lightning. But Mark Alabakoff, uh, again, like this, the previous game that we saw between the, the, flyer, uh, the, the Flyers and the Fire, it is... Uh, a game of momentum between two high-quality sides. It really is, and the balance that the Benigo Spirit can score with, I mean, you look at their output just for this first quarter, they've got four two-point baskets, they've got three three-point baskets, they've been on the free-throw line seven times and made six of them. It's it's difficult to try to keep them to a beatable scoreline when they're keeping all of those scoring streams going. Um, but for Adelaide, I mean, I love the relentlessness that they've got. I mean, they're not being uh, intimidated by playing against the ladder leaders. Um, the work ethic has been there. I mean, certainly exemplified by the offensive rebounding output. Um, but they're continuing to try and play at a fast tempo, which has been the hallmark of how they've played this entire season. So quarter time is uh, the, our state of play here. And there is a look at the key numbers obviously early in the game but we talked about the offensive rebound dominance of the Adelaide Lightning certainly coach Nat Hurst be pretty pleased with uh, what her team has been able to produce in that sense so far but as was Annalee Maley with uh, 10 points 50% field goal percentage as well uh, who uh, really did get the Bendigo spirit back into that game in the, in the first quarter. She did. And, I mean, you look at both teams and the assist count is quite low. So while there's been, I mean, and Maley's a great example of this, some fantastic individual efforts, you're going to need to see some adjustments or, or better decision-making perhaps as the game wears on and fatigue starts to play a part. Um, defenders are going to start to come and crowd space around these people that are going off the bounce, so Maley included, or perhaps the likes of Steph Talbot on the, the Adelaide side. Can they get other people involved and be able to correct shots for other people uh, and try and get this assist count up for both teams? Great to be in Mildura tonight for some Signet WNBL action. Kirsten Bell and Ali Wilson with a friendly conversation just before the start of the second quarter. So many terrific players out on display. High quality game for the Mildura locals to uh, take in on a Saturday night. Great to have your company wherever you're watching on Nine Now. Kelsey Griffin for Maley. Froling goes to work on the left hand. Maley. Jump ball is caught. She hits the deck. Not too happy with the treatment there, Annalie Maley. She thought it should have been a foul on the Lightning. And some stern words with the ref. There's her heart in her sleeve. Has such passion and determination. Cabillo. Oh, in the end, no one came at Abby, and she was able to lay that in with ultimate ease. Great change of pace by her. I think it's really difficult to guard point guards that have got that tempo change. One point ball game as Kelsey Griffin kicks it out. A really good look here for Ali Wilson. And there's a foul off the rebound there. That will probably be against Alicia Froling. It was one-on-one -on -one there with Chelsea Brook. Chelsea Brook had a terrific 2021-22 WNBL season. Some excellent minutes off the bench for the Adelaide Lightning. She's an emerging stretch four, so she's got the ability to shoot the three-point shot, but then play as a back-to-basket post as well. Basham on the floor for the Adelaide Lightning. Bell, lovely pick and roll there with Brook. On cue, hits the two. And well waited too, waited for two defenders to stay and commit to her before she made that pass to Brooke, who was able to run ahead and create advantage. Griffin has the mismatch here, makes the most of it, steps inside, can't hit the two, but will be heading to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Just a champion of this competition, Kelsey Griffin. Mentioned her CV just beforehand. Susie Bakovic medalist in 
2019 as well. And, it, and above all, just a, a player that, that stands up in, in big games and in big moments, Mark. Yeah, unfortunately, I've been on the losing yes. end of two grand finals uh, thanks to two brilliant performances by Kelsey Griffin. But, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, when you've got the ability to go anywhere or play in different lineups and, you know, help those teams be successful, that's the mark of a champion, and that's Kelsey Griffin. Maley. In fact, there's Ali Wilson on that occasion coming up with a steal. Allows Maley now to have a look inside the perimeter with the right hand somehow gets it to go. Still blows my mind how she's able to fit into gaps like that and make that right hand layup. I've seen her do it since she was 12 years old. Just has this incredible knack. Beautiful stroke from Bell. That didn't connect though. And Ali Wilson having a big game after starting tonight. Griffin goes to work on the inside, spinning and banking it off the glass. Kelsey Griffin starting to find her rhythm. One of the foul, but it looks like a uh, tech has been called there. And you go, Coach Kennedy Karima. Groove, you can see Griffin at the Bottom of your screen there was laughing about it. May have been for some back chat towards the referee for the, the non-call. So it allowed the Lightning to shoot a, an extra point here and they will get the ball back from their back court. Another whistle on the play. Trying to work out uh, the state of play at the moment. 29-25 lead for the Bendigo Spirit over the Adelaide Lightning. With this high tempo as well, Mark, is, does it suit the Lightning, who, who have been known as a... I'm talking about their gritty play just beforehand. One of the high scoring teams in the competition. Can Bendigo maintain this tempo for the rest of the game? I think they can. I think it suits both teams. Um, in the early stages, it looks like Bendigo is a little bit more organised with their offence, um, whereas the points on the board for the Lightning has been more as a result of hustle efforts. Um, if they're able to stabilise with you know, whatever their patterned offence is, playing at the tempo that they want and create better shots, it'll be a, a better situation for Adelaide. But, I mean, Bendigo can play, they've got the lineup to be able to play fast, slow. Um, any sort of style that you need to be able to be competitive. The Spirit trying to drive baseline there, just step stepping out of bounds. The Lightning will get the ball back here. Lauren Mansfield back out, out on the floor. They have a lot of experience at multiple levels, international level. Four lays. Going to work there on Ali Wilson, continuing her excellent campaign in 2022. She's so poised, so she's able to step back onto her back foot, be in total control. Um, does a great job of squaring her shoulders to the basket to get that shot away and make it. Great ball movement here from Bendigo. Ends up with Alicia Froling. She's trying to back down. With the mismatch there. Basham is guarding. Froling. A couple of times Basham has been caught on first it's Kelsey Griffin and now Alicia Froling. And you've got to stay clean uh, defensively if you're Basham there. So putting her hands in draws uh, gets awarded the foul. Um, Alicia Froling's caught the ball and she's clearly trying to go to her left hand and drop her shoulder in. You've got to just get your hands up, wall up, wear the contact down the middle of your body and take a charge. So Alicia Froling at the charity stripe. It's a couple. Bendigo maintain that handy buffer at the moment, a 31-27 lead. But Lightning have put their stars on the bench early in this second term, and Talbot has uh, returned along with Munro as well. 
Ball A's. That is a tough attempt and an outstanding finish. Has the body control on her, though, to be able to fade, square her shoulders, as we mentioned earlier, and then get the finger roll fading out of bounds. What a tremendous young talent we've got. Very exciting for Aussie Hoops to see Izzy Ball A's putting the season together that she is at the moment. Here's Froling. Great spin and step inside. Gets one back on Ball A's. Talbot. Pick and roll here with Munro. Stolen by Kelsey Griffin. The execution was great on the pick and roll. If you're Munro, you've got to keep the ball high. And then at the offensive end of the floor, KG gets it done. If you're Coach Nat Hurst, you're probably thinking about taking a timeout here if you're unable to get a score on this possession. Mansfield. Works her way inside. Munro, deep to attempt, falling well short. And Kelly Wilson comes up with the rebound. And the spirit pounce again. Tessa Lady can't hit the three. Talbot has ball lays wide open. Thought about the three. Drove hard inside. Gets another layup in. Tough baskets from Izzy Ball A's. Great crowd in attendance, great atmosphere. The Mildura Sporting Precinct. Some Signet WNBL action. Ali Wilson drives hard inside. Munro did come up eventually with a defensive rebound with a little bit of assistance from Mansfield. And then Munro was left all by herself going the other way and gets one back for the Lightning and reduces it to two points. Credit to both teams just continuing to play through the contact there. Ali Wilson again. Disappointed that she wasn't, uh, didn't draw the contact. That pass was inaccurate. Missed Lauren Mansfield though for Adelaide Lightning and Bendigo will reset from their backcourt. Timeout is called. In Mildura, with four minutes left on the clock in this second quarter. This time out is brought to you by CTM Sport. Considering travelling interstate with your hoops team, consider CTM Sport for a competitive, innovative and customised travel solution that puts your team on top. And for more information, head to ctmsport.com.au. So Kennedy Karima and... Nat Hurst addressing their respective sides. A certain coach's shoes you'd rather be in at the moment in terms of how this game is placed just before half time, Mark? Well, I think the momentum's with the spirit. Um, I mean, certainly the pace of play, you know, we alluded to earlier being one that favours kind of both teams. Um, the Lightning, though, the quality of shot attempt and the, the offence, it looks a little out of sync for me. Okay. Um, a possession ago, they've got um, Munro shooting a, uh, a jump shot from the free throw line, and, and that's the shot that they're getting within the offence when she's been so dangerous rolling to the basket or around the basket. You can just see that they need to find their way. So this timeout will come at a good time for Adelaide. Um, but in terms of the identity of you know, who's playing to the style of game that they would want, it's certainly Bendigo at the moment. So all of Bendigo's scoring has been done by their starting five so far, whereas for the Adelaide Lightning, they've had four players score off the bench already, with Ball A's having six points. Brooke, Kibillo and Basham as well have also hit the scoreboard. Basham, albeit, was from a, uh, a free throw after a foul. And good on them for trusting, or Coach Nat Hurst trusting her bench. Uh, Adelaide actually has the most bench points in the competition, averaging yep. 23 points per game. Izzy Ball A's is also playing a, uh, a big role in that count and in that stat. Kelly Wilson for Griffin. Beautiful pass. Fooled them all. Got it to Ali Wilson and got the two to go. Talbot spinning. Picking a bat out for Whittle. Guarded by Maley. And Griffin comes up with the steal. Maley back out on the floor after... Recharging the batteries on the bench. Griffin backing down on Talbot. What a spin. Can't get that right hand finish to drop though. But you see you've got Maley lurking around the O glass again. Yep. She's always a threat. 
Talbot in rhythm, falling well short on that triple attempt. Kelly Wilson slowing the tempo down. Ali Wilson gets rid of Munro very easily in the end. And then Griffin did the hard work. Mainly missed. Griffin came up with the putback. Spirit lead 39-33. Timeout is called with just over three minutes remaining. And Spirit showing why they are such a dominant force since uh, the last time out. Strong period of play for Kennedy Kareem's side. Yeah, and Kelsey Griffin will exemplify the point I'm about to make, but the teams that are most difficult to deal with, I mean, from an identity standpoint, you've either got a team that's smart and skilled or plays very physically, and uh, the Spirit have the ability to do both those things, and it's embodied by Kelsey Griffin. So you see a great read where she gets a catch going to the basket, uh, a defender slides across to try to blow up that layup attempt. She makes a great decision to give the ball up, but then she stays in the play and gets the tip in. This time out brought to you by Signet. Stay connected with the latest WNBL news and social highlights. Keep your favourite tech charged up at home or on the go with Signet's extensive range of charging products and digital accessories. A big thanks to Signet for powering the WNBL with high quality tech this season. So explore their range at Signet.com. The Griffin up to 13, Maley with 12, and KG23 really has taken over in this second quarter and quintessentially often an underrated part externally I think of Kelsey Griffin's range uh, of her game is her ability to create turnovers and rack up the steals she's already got three steals in in her game she, you, you just you, you can't be a, a smidgen off your game offensively if Kelsey Griffin's near you near you she's one step ahead mm. you know not only is she a uh, a relentless worker from a work ethic standpoint, but she just studies the game. She's a thinker, as I mentioned earlier, and she just plays a step ahead of her matchup. Just under three minutes remaining now in this second quarter. Mansfield got the screen from Whittle. The gap for Talbot. Whittle wants it in the post. Mansfield wants it for three. And when you're shooting the ball this season like Lauren Mansfield is, why not give it to her? Big bucket from Laura Mansfield. Lightning back within three. So cool, like cool, calm and collected. Griffin for Maley. Four to shoot. So Ali Wilson pulls the trigger from way downtown and hits. Good response from the Spirit at the other end. Bell inside for Talbot. Great defense from Ali Wilson. And Kelsey Griffin rips it away off the glass. But then it's Monroe who rips it, rips it away. Lady dives in there as well. And we have a jump. There's great hustle there. And I think I like the idea of being able to go to Talbot in the post. The closest player was Marina Whittle. If she cut to the basket, Emily Maley would have to defend her and then Talbot would have more space. But because she stayed on the elbow, Maley could shrink that space and it forced uh, Talbot to have to turn towards or over her right shoulder and then without a backboard angle. It's really important all players move off the ball, especially when it goes to the post. 42-36 lead for the Bendigo. Spirit, they held a 23-20 lead at the first change, so they've just extended that lead momentarily. But Adelaide showing plenty of fight and some great contributions throughout their entire roster. It's a really critical time, this two minutes. This could blow out to a double-digit lead, yep. or the Lightning can stay in touch heading into the break. Well, with Tessa Lady. Quick Tessa Lady spins around and misfired. Alicia Froling picked up the rebound, then caught some contact on the way through and will head to the line. So Alicia leaning in there and only releasing her position to go and get possession. Great job using her body to be able to come up with that ball. I mean, a big season, Alicia Froling, averaging the 10 points per game. Again, one of those players that's getting better with 
every game she plays. Normally goes at 50% from the free throw line. Having a pretty good night so far, Alicia Froling from the charity stripe. She's 4 of 4 so far. Munro feeds Bell, the two imports combined. Mansfield. Good off the hand. Mainly able to come up with a rebound. So it created the advantage they wanted. Bell needed to take that dribble into the keyway or a step wider to be able to get that throwback three look for Mansfield, but didn't, and that's why it was contested. Mailey with the right. She's playing one heck of a game. She's got 14. And a steal and a turnover. And not quite coming off there. Cassidy McLean was the player that burst away. Almost comes up with a second steal. McLean gets a hand in there as, as well. Mailey will take it herself. And Cassidy McLean will be disappointed. That would have been her basket if that had gone through. What a spin from Bell. Marina Whittle coming up with the offensive rebound. And Cassidy McLean, an underrated on ball defender. Um, she plays for being the Bendigo Braves in the NBL 1, is probably arguably the, the best on ball defender guarding point guards up the floor. Right. Um, gets her hands in, gets her body into great positions. Um, you saw it there where she was able to get her hand to the ball and poke it loose. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to finish the layup on that occasion, but then stayed in the fight. She's been around the Bendigo setup for a number of seasons now, Cassidy McLean. And he's still so young. Yep. Um, you know, her best basketball is still ahead of her. Whittle hits on that last attempt there. Timeout call with 36.7 seconds remaining. You're right, Mark, about this, that important two-minute block there. It looked like the Spirit were about to go into that double-digit lead. A couple of handy free throws made there by the Adelaide Lightning. They, they can't afford to, to give the Spirit a good look from, out of this timeout. And a great timeout by uh, Bendigo to be able to like pattern something here to get a, a shot that they want. Um, so the timeouts obviously don't roll through to the second half. So you get a chance here, even though you have momentum, to stop the game and get a, a patterned or scripted play um, for a shot type. And you could do worse than being able to try and get the ball to Anneli Maley with the hot hand that she's had. She's got 14 points to go with four rebounds and three steals so far in this contest. So if you're just catching up on all the, the WNBL results today, it's been a, an exciting day for the Sydney Flames. They got their first win, 92 to 80 over the UC Capitals at the National Convention Centre. And then Mark and I saw a cracking contest just earlier between the Southside Flyers and the Townsville Fire and a handy hand from Lauren Nicholson right at the end denied the Flyers from a last gasp opportunity and the Fire hanging on for an 82 to 79 victory on the road and uh, to, to move to, to keep their spot in the, the top four there and the Flyers now in danger of falling out of the, the top four if the Lightning are able to, to win tonight. Bell got up high off her hands. It goes out of bounds and it's still the Bendigo ball with 19 seconds on the shot clock and 32 on the game clock. A smart counter move by Adelaide to um, go into the 1-2-2 half court trap there. Try and disrupt the timing of Bendigo with whatever they've patterned coming out of the timeout. Ali Wilson with the left hand gets it to go. Nine point lead now for Bendigo. And Mansfield brings it into the front court. Guarded by McLean. So her defensive capabilities just before. Mansfield though puts it up in her face and it falls well short. Ali Wilson, big rebound. They run out of time though, McLean. Denied the opportunity for a long-range buzzer beater, but Bendigo would be very happy with their second quarter. Able to extend their lead. They led by three at the first change, and they had a 24 to 18 second quarter to ensure they have a 47 to 38 lead. Mark Alabakov at half time, and just showing why they are certainly one of the, the, the championship favourites, the, the Bendigo Spirit.
in this WNBL season. Absolutely, and you know, having match winners all across the roster, um, knowing that they've got the likes of Megan McKay still to come in and Abby Werung, who are two really critical players within their lineup, two players who can you know lead you to the promised land, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but being able to force a, a team that's on a little bit of a hot streak like Adelaide into 14 first half turnovers, um, I think that's a credit to the, the defense. I mean, you mentioned right in the, the pregame that it's one of the best defensive teams coming up against a, a really talented offense lineup and so far the defense is winning. Spirit with a 47 to 38 lead. Three players for the Spirit in double figures in Maley Griffin and Ali Wilson who's really thriving from uh, her spot in the starting five tonight. Whereas Adelaide have a, a good spread of scoring but no one in double figures yet. It's a great night in Mildura for some Signet WNBL action and we're seeing some of the best players in the competition going at it. Great to have your company wherever you're watching on Nine Now. Highlights galore. And we've got plenty more highlights coming up in the second half. It's Bendigo 47, Lightning 38. We'll take a short break and come back in just a few moments. Oh, now throws away. Now fires away for three and got it. <laughs> Off the steal and then the score. For Bendigo and Maley fires for three and nails it from deep. Nice move from Maley and another basket for her. The third quarter onwards. Maley off the window, good, wow. Turns it over, Bell there, ready to grab it. Put some speed on. Little behind that pass to Munro for the finish. And we might see that in the top five plays of the week. Wilson straight to the rack and scores. Oh, now turnover. And guess who? Kelsey Griffin goes up, layup. Straight to the basket. And it gets it to fall. Oh, great shot is good. From Whittle. That's our first 50 bucks. Share the dignity. $50 for every three pointer sunk across round four. Digna is thrilled to be able to donate $5,000 to share the dignity. Throws it out. Three point basket. Another $50 for the fighting period poverty round. The final total of $8,750. Absolutely outstanding. To be able to see the girls talking about periods and just get over it and the normality of talking, having these conversations is so, makes my heart sing. Prepare your taste buds. Hungry? Famished. For six delicious nights on nine. Yeah, to replicate the snack. Australia's best chefs. I love you. Head to head, recreating our most iconic snacks. I think I stuffed this up. <laughs> Get it together, I know you've got this. It looks like salt and pepper calamari. <laughs> New Snack Masters. Stream the latest episodes on nine now. You know what they don't teach MPI schools how to get the money shot. They undercover. What are you doing? Dad, is how you get the money shot. Cracking cases. Nothing says I'm stalking you like a hidden camera. The old fashioned way. Jason oh. Priestley. Are you nuts? It's a rental. Private Eyes. Stream complete seasons on Nine Now. You ever get that feeling that one choice could change your whole life? What if you chose passion? And what is it that you want to do? I'm going to be the next Billy Joel. Guy can dream, right? What if you chose family? You saved a man's life. Your dad would be proud of you. What if you chose love? Can you believe we made him? 
At least we did one thing right. It's only natural to wonder what if. Ordinary Joe. Stream every episode on Nine Now. I have a family that I have to get back to. Back to the wait. Gather is over. And I know that's something that you understand. Welcome home. We're being hunted. No! More sinkholes are coming. How deep? Let's go! Does the mystery go? You are never going to believe what happened. What happened. La Brea Season 2. Stream the latest episodes on Nine Now. Introducing She Hoops, an Australian-first online platform for women in basketball. From live mentoring sessions to panel sessions, exclusive interviews with the biggest names in the sport, education and upskilling courses. Do not underestimate the power of a good blind. Take this exhausted couch. Now it stands before you. Mm, magnifique. Even this cocktail of dead skin is gracefully waltzing. Da 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 da. DIY blinds change the ugly. They donated toxic land to a school. Someone put it there, deliberately. You said this case was unwinnable. Don't make this personal. It's already personal. Dad, what happened here? There's something you're not telling me. Burden of truth. Stream complete seasons on Nine Now. Records will tumble. Heroes born. The world's best short course superstars go for gold. Live from Melbourne, Kyle Chalmers, Mac Horton, Emma McKeon, Brendan Smith, Minna Atherton, and Katie McEwen lead a world class Aussie team. Ariane Titmus, Ian Thorpe, and Gian Rooney host the FINA World Swimming Champs. Starts Tuesday on 9 and 9 now. It's the biggest WNBL season yet, and superstar Lauren Jackson returns. Turn it up. Don't miss a block, basket, or game winner. Just not steal the win. WNBL, live on 9 now. You get one song to listen to for the rest of your life. What is it? Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is one I couldn't get. I think I dozed off. Um... Oh, this is a hard one. Feel So Close by Calvin Harris. Dancing in the Moonlight. Um, just... Russ, I thought you got me. Location by Dave and Burner Boy. Oh, um, something by Drake. That's a tough one. Um, maybe like flight facilities, Claire de Lune, something like that. Uh, untouched by the Voyagers. Ah, Phil. Oh no. <laughs> Heartache on the dance floor is what I just said my favourite song was last week, so I better go. I better, I better go with that. <laughs> oh, candy shop. It's <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that came to my head. <laughs> it's the last time I listened to you on my phone. <laughs>
just moments away in Mildura between the Bendigo Spirit and the Adelaide Lightning at half time. It is Bendigo holding a 47 to 38 lead over the Lightning. Ben Waterworth with you alongside longtime WNBL assistant coach Mark Alabakoff. And we just saw the Spirit start to flex their muscle in the back end of that second quarter, Mark. They really did, and they've got so much scoring punch. You know, to put 47 points on the board puts them on track for that ballpark of 100 points. I think for Adelaide to get themselves back into the contest, it's going to need to come from the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Um, putting nearly 40 points on the, the board themselves gives them a chance, um, but they've got to stem the tide of that tidal wave, really, of, uh, of scoring that the Spirit have at their disposal. That's, we talked about it just b before we could be, um, yeah, the, the start of our broadcast as well, in terms of this, it felt like a game of best offense be the best defense and to hold the, the lightning the 38 points at um at, at half time you'd suggest uh, coach green would be pretty satisfied with that yeah and i think some of it has got to be qualitative as well so you're forcing the lightning to shoot shots that wouldn't be within their regular system uh, a lot of the plays that they've made have been off um hustle efforts or individual efforts and that's exemplified by the fact that they've only got the five assists on the board for mm -hmm. a team with that many weapons so like for adelaide they've got to try and stabilize and find a little bit of a balance um get the ball moving get the game into their style of play and their rhythm um but the Spirit have done a tremendous job in being able to disrupt that and, and hold an early lead. So players heading back to their respective benches. They'll have a, a couple of minutes to, to refocus. Coach Nat Hurst with the Adelaide Lightning and Coach Ken Karima with the Bendigo Spirit as well. So just repeating the scores from earlier today, if, uh, in case you missed it and are just tuning in. But uh, the UC Caps went down to the Sydney Flames 80 to 92 in favour of the Flames a big win there for the Flames at the National Convention Centre and a, a cracking contest between the Southside Flyers and the Townsville Flyer earlier with the Fire holding on for an 82 79 win at the State Basketball Centre, Lauren Nicholson doing the damage and uh, Carly Samuelson with six triples in that game absolutely fantastic performance from the guards of the Townsville Fire and then here at halftime in our triple header. It's been a long day for Mark back off today. It's the Adelaide Lightning uh, trailing 38 to the Bendigo Spirit 47. Do, do you feel like, though, in the, in the past in the past two games, including this one, Mark, that we're, that we're seeing arguably the, the top four sides in, in the competition at the moment alongside the Melbourne Boomers? Is that, is that kind of the top five in, in your rankings at the moment? Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned the Melbourne Boomers. They're playing tremendous basketball at the, the moment. But I think the theme that I'm noticing across, well, this is the third game in the string of games today, is there's so much to play for and yep. for different reasons. Uh, and, and I love the spirit that uh, each of, I mean, to quote a pun, a spirit that each of the teams has played each of the games in, you know, highly competitive. Um, you know, with the early game, Sydney and Canberra, there was that first win on the board up for grabs. Um, we had finals positions um, un up for grabs in the Fire and Flyers. And now this one is the same. You've got the Lightning trying to break into that top four and try to dethrone a, a really strong spirit squad that's started the season as, as good as any, or, you know, probably as good as they ever have in the club's history. Yeah, it's certainly their best... Uh one of their best uh, starts to the, the season since that, I think maybe the 2013-14 uh, championship year. They were, uh, they were a, a dominant force in that uh, in that season. But uh, they are looking very dominant as well. Repeating as well, they were their two of uh, their, their most important players today as well. The Bendigo Spirit. Underway in the third quarter. Talbot fading away. That's a tough attempt. And Maley comes up with her first defensive rebound of the half. That's six rebounds so far for Maley in this game. Kelly Wilson for Griffin for Ali Wilson. The cut from Annalie Maley baseline. The idea was right. The execution slightly off and the Lightning get the ball back. Excellent read by Anneli Maley. Any time that you're in the corner and your defender is playing above your eye line or not looking at you, that's a great time to make a back cut, which she did there. The pass just a little bit overthrown. Great to see fans of all ages at uh, the basketball tonight in Mildura. Terrific to have the Signet WNBL in the regional Victorian town. What a move from Whittle with ample confidence. Drove in with a reverse layup, missed. 
and then ensured that Bendigo didn't get a clean breakaway there from the stop. Yeah, got back in the play, got a fingertip to the ball. Kelly Wilson goes to work, guarded by Mansfield. Picking it out for Griffin. Inside for Maley. One on one with Whittle. And Whittle forces the jump ball, and she gets one there on Adelie Maley. Might be a bit of uh, back chat and a bit of banter, I think, between Marina Whittle and Annalie Maley as well throughout the game. It's all professional on the court as well. Two fantastic players. As Alicia Froling misses the two attempts. Mansfield for Talbot. Whittle wants it in the post. Mansfield will want her left side here. Said lobs it in for, for Munro, guarded by Maley. Had the height there, Munro, and easily got over Anna Lee. Hit the two. Just look to be second guessing themselves a little bit, Adelaide. I think they had two really clean looks at the three point shot there that they passed up. Um, it ended up well going to that post feed to Munro, but it looks like they're not really in sync with their regular style at the moment. Maley, good look for three, knocks it down. We a big game is the reigning Susie B medalist. Bell whips it in for Whittle. Lovely step from Marina Whittle and banks it in off the glass. And at the other end, oh, terrific block from Bell. Timing personified, swats it away, and Adelaide get it back. Talbot open for three, as is Whittle. She falls well short, opportunity goes begging. Dodged a bullet there, the spirit. That was a wide open look for a very capable three-point shooter in Marina Whittle. And they make it count at the other end of the floor as Froling banks it in. She takes her tally to nine. Foul called, just to Kelly Wilson's bemusement. Second personal foul, and the first on the spirit in this third quarter. The fan in me loves to watch these two go head to head. In the, having a decade in the WNBL, um, as I have as a, an assistant coach, these have been probably two of the most, I'd say, smart and skilled point guards that we've had in the country. Man Mansfield and Kelly Wilson. Absolutely, a real treat to see them go head to head. Mansfield finds Whittle. She can't find one of the, of the ring there. Referees converge. We had we've got one, two referees pointing one way and another pointing the other way. I'll work out which way it goes. You'll be the judge at home. See, Munro's got to resist the temptation to bring the ball below her shoulders. I mean, she's six foot four plus. Uh, the moment that she brings the ball below shoulder level, then guards can get a piece of it. There, it was the arms of or the outstretched arms of Alicia Froling. If she catches the ball above shoulders and finishes above shoulders, that would be two points. We'd probably be looking at a three-point play here. Into Munro came into this game averaging the, the 13 points and the eight rebounds per game. She's now three of four from the charity strike tonight, and the Lightning stay within eight points of the Bendigo Spirit. Griffin drives baseline, driving in hard. Draws the contact and will hit the line and shoot a couple. Now, Kelsey's a great baseline driver. She's done this her entire career, so you would know that as a scout coming in. If you're helping, uh, like Steph Talbot did there, uh, made a similar point in the Southside game, where if you're rotating from that low split, you've got to just try and get that driver between your feet and wall up and wear any contact down the middle. If you get airborne, you're either going to get a block clean or you give up a foul like that. Wherever she goes, Kelsey Griffin, she brings team success and feels like coming back to Bendigo is... She might bring some team success a little bit later on. There's still a lot 
A round's left in the season. The Bendigo Spirit looking good. And they're looking good in this game as well. 52-44 lead. They miss fire on that attempt. Talbot. She drives baseline on Kelsey Griffin. No foul call. Griffin comes up with the rebound. Maley sprints forward. Takes on Bell. Froling picks up the offensive rebound. And then Munro comes up with the ball off the glass. Bell, deep two. Two rushed shots in a row by both teams. Yep. Griffin will slow down the tempo and get into the hands of someone who knows how to slow the tempo of a game down, and Kelly Wilson been doing it for a number of years. And that's why she's worth her weight in gold in your team. Always looking for a player in better position. Two to shoot here for Griffin. And she hit the deck. Good defense from Adelaide to ensure that they force Bendigo into a late shot there on the shot clock. And then a tough one up was for Kelsey Griffin. Ten to shoot here for Munro and the Adelaide Lightning. Talbot, Mansfield wants their left side, gets their left side, can't get the two. So both teams misfiring a fair bit in the past 90 seconds. Fatigue may be playing a factor too here. We didn't see a great offensive rebounding presence for yep. the Lightning after that shot attempt. But Kelsey Griffin breaks the drought. And hits a lovely shot. Brooke at the other end. She breaks Adelaide's drought, lays it in. Back under 10 points, the margin. Kelly Wilson, <laughs> bold putting it up there in the face of Munro. Got it over Munro in the end, but missed the shot. And Adelaide will reset here for the baseline. And the dribble drive motion style that uh, the Benigo Spirit like to play. If you allow them to do that, they can play at their rhythm. They've got weapons all over the floor. I think there's an opportunity just then where Chelsea Brook could have sunk uh, below the line of the ball and been able to be a defender that shrinks the space around any of that dribble penetration that the uh, Spirit like to play with. Bell sprints through. Couldn't get the two to drop. She will head to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Well, that was explosive from Kirsten Bell. And having a balance of being able to get to the rim, I mean, we know she can shoot the three ball at a, an elite clip. Um, if she can balance it out with being able to put the ball to the floor and create uh, the point of the basket, she'll be really deadly for them. The NBA championship for Kirsten Bell. Put a lot of energy and a lot of talent to this Adelaide Lightning roster. And they find themselves the Lightning back within seven. Froling hands off for Kelly Wilson. Lavy wide open for three. Drew Bell, but can't hit that triple. And Talbot combining there with Borlays, who again shows ample confidence heading towards the rack, but can't get it to go. Ali Wilson for Maley. Lavy again. In the outskirts of the perimeter with Kelly Wilson. On the back goes Kelly. To Lavy. Beautiful. Terrific basketball from the Bendigo Spirit. At the other end, though, quick transition from Adelaide. They get the quick response through Brook. That's often the best time to attack as soon as a team has scored. Quick inbound, uh, you know, while they're applauding the last possession, yes. you might be able to get it a, a kick ahead and get to the point of the rim really quickly. Oh, great hands from Bell. Terrific steal. Opportunity here for Adelaide. Oh, Talbot for Brook. They somehow keep it alive, though. It almost fell apart. Talbot. Bell for three. Lovely stroke. Terrific finish from Kirsten Bell. Wilson at the other end, well off target. Bell comes up with a rebound, and Adelaide all of a sudden back within five. A yeah, rush shot. You'd probably want to think about getting Kelsey Griffin back on the floor. You see her ready getting, uh, getting ready, sorry, to check into the game. Maybe called for the foul. 
Bell has really up the ante here. She is now up to the 10 points in this game. The leading scorer for Adelaide for 11. In particular, one of the things I've liked with uh, with her is that coach Nat Hurst has played her on a point guard. So they started the game with her on Kelly Wilson. So she's got the quickness to be able to stay in front, but then the length and the size that she has can be bothersome for passing angles. Team high 12 points for Kirsten Bell now, and the lightning back within three. So great comeback and fight back led here. My bell for the Adelaide Lightning. Griffin is back on the floor and immediately makes a difference. Talbot for Borlase. Fought them all. Got the high percentage shot, but then unfortunately missed the layup opportunity. Unlucky roll for Izzy Borlase and Bendigo. Will reset. Here is that fierce determination of Kelsey Griffin. It's a delight it is for Bendigo fans this year to see the likes of Wilson and Maley and Griffin all combining. Great hand in there from Ball A's. Mansfield comes up with the offensive rebound. Bell is at the hot hand this quarter. Can't continue the heat. Well off target with the air ball. And credit to Tessa Levy for that closeout. I mean, she's a world-class defender. Is able to fly out and create a little bit of indecision for Kirsten Bell. And Warriors are out of the points. Just over two minutes remaining in this third quarter. Great to have you company wherever you're watching on 9 now. Some Signet WNBL action. The third game in our triple header. Must work if you've stayed with us all the way through today. Ellie Wilson trying to drive inside through the contact. Bryce Miles from KG23. Ellie Wilson has been a, a terrific acquisition for the Bendigo Spirit as well. She can play multiple positions, and that's a, a real credit to her. So she's had experience within the league, playing some point guard, yep. playing some shooting guard. Yep. She's been a, a defensive presence. She can hit the three. Um, but her real go-to is that left drive that you just saw her get fouled on. Griffin backing down, kicking it out for Kelly Wilson. Three to shoot here for Kelly Wilson. She goes for KG, 23, but she can't hit the three. Mainly, though, can give them a fresh 14 seconds. Levy always looking to create. Feeds Wilson. She connects from deep. Allie Wilson with a big triple. She's up to 14 points. Big game for her. Critical possession here for the Lightning. They'd want to get a score just to keep within touch. So Bell puts up the three. Can't get it to go. Brook luckily... Comes up with a fresh 14 seconds for Adelaide. Talbot pulls the trigger from way downtown. A couple of times we've seen Steph Talbot go early with a three-point attempt. I feel, feel like they could have got a better shot out of that possession. Can the Bendigo Spirit make them pay at the other end? Griffin steps hard inside and does make the Lightning pay. And that's a challenge when you're trying to beat good teams like the Bendigo Spirit. It comes down to a handful of possessions, so you can't mismanage anything. Talbot this time does the high percentage play, works her way inside. It's field goal back for Adelaide. Four second differential between game clock and shot clock. Sally Wilson works her way inside, then back outside. Four to shoot. Kelsey Griffin misfires, and Talbot, well, in the end, they've been sort of caught in two minds. Could have put up the shot, nonetheless. Bendigo, after a, a spirited fight back there, part of the pump, while the Adelaide Lightning able to 
just get some scoreboard ascendancy back in that third quarter. Coincidentally, it came when Kelsey Griffin was back on the floor at a three-quarter time. It is a 65-57 lead for the Bendigo Spirit. Mark Alabakov over the Adelaide Lightning, but uh, it was that uh, third quarter really was lit up by Kirsten Bell, who sparked the Adelaide Lightning back into action. Yeah, great like moves and counter moves, I guess, by both uh, coaches, but then certainly by the key players stepping up and making plays when they needed to. So the Adelaide Lightning win the quarter 19 to 18. So it, that's a real picture of how much of an arm wrestle it yep. was. The challenge for the Lightning now becomes, well, you haven't really eaten into the scoreline. So you've still got that eight point deficit. There's a move to be made that starts to eat into that a little bit and puts you in a position where you might be able to be uh, you know, around the mark within the contest. Uh, the ascendancy is certainly with the spirit for mine. Uh, every time that you've had KG get involved in action, she has such a gravity around her that she can make plays for herself or for others. Um, Ali Wilson coming on and having a, a massive cameo role. And this is the depth that they have on the roster. I mean, we saw some fantastic play from um, Anneli Maley in the, on the offensive end, and she carries you for a first half. And then now in this third quarter, Alex Wilson steps up and does the same. Yeah, and Ali Wilson as well, get it with 14 points, but also the eight rebounds as well. We've seen the rebound count has evened up in the, over the past couple of uh, quarters. Adelaide had a terrific start in the rebound count in this uh, in this game, but uh, Ali Wilson with eight rebounds, Annalie Maley quintessentially with the eight rebounds, heading for yet another double double. You'd think the reigning uh, the reigning uh, MVP, uh, but. Uh, of the 65 points for the Bendigo Spirit, 63 of them have come between four players as well. Where the, the scoring's been a little bit more spread out for the Adelaide Lightning. Can, can you see the Lightning really fighting back in this fourth quarter and, and really taking up the Bendigo Spirit, uh, Mark? Well, if they do, I mean, it's going to come down to their depth. So they're going to need to roll through deep within the lineup and have contributions come from an effort standpoint uh, from people off the bench and uh, certainly a scoring standpoint too. So you're looking at the Izzy Borlays, the Chelsea Brooks, having to come in and have a real impact. Um, where you've logged a lot of minutes for the Bendigo Spirit, if you're them, you know, that comes with an element of risk. I yep. still feel like they're in control, um, but if the Lightning are going to make a contest of this, it's going to be through their, their depth and kind of beating the spirit by committee. One quarter to go of this triple header in the WNBL today. Super Saturday winners so far. The Sydney Flames and the Townsville Fire. And there's that sneaky hand in there from Kelsey Griffin. Forces the turnover. Kelly Wilson kicks it out for Maley, for Griffin, for three. Boom! And that's the last thing the Adelaide Lightning wanted at the start of the quarter. A quick turnover and then a Kelsey Griffin three to lift the Bendigo spirit and the fans in Mildura tonight. And you think from a psychology standpoint, you know, the Lightning, you've had two possessions where you've had a pass in that's been deflected twice and then you've copped a three back the other way. Really challenging to overcome. The experience of Mansfield and Talbot will be really important here. Whittle as well, the deep two attempt off target. Griffin having a mighty game. Kelly Wilson for Lady all by herself. Had a really good look at the rim there. Borlais kicks up the tempo. This is the teardrop attempt. See, there's just a hesitation for mine watching Adelaide. Like Chelsea Brook is a capable three-point shooter, a very good one. Yep. Why she didn't pull the trigger on that uh, kick-out pass, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, the hands there of Griffin. It's now an 11-point lead. It's a game-high 11-point lead as well for the Bendigo Spirit. Talbot, though, might have something to say about that. Maley brings down the rebound off the missed shot, though. Oh, big collision there. Kelly Wilson involved. Brooke as well. Putting the hand up straight away. First foul on the Lightning in this fourth quarter. Lavey for Griffin. Kicking it out for Ali Wilson. This is the long attempt. Now called on the Lightning. 
the rebound there. Book tangling there with Griffin and just getting her high with her left hand. 68 57. Lightning and a couple of buckets in a row here. Get some momentum going. Easier said than done against one of the best defensive teams in the competition. Against one of the best players in the competition in Kelsey Griffin. You've got to help earlier. You've got to force somebody else to try to beat you if you're Adelaide. 25 points for Griffin. But for the spirit, keep going to the well. Keep using Kelsey Griffin as a catalyst. Borlase gets one against the brain. First points in the quarter for Adelaide. It comes through their young gun off the bench. Big three from Izzy Borlase. And climbing in defensively too. Kelly Wilson picks it out for Maley. Pulls up for the mid-range two and she knocks it down. Talbot lobbing it in. Griffin there to put the pressure on Marina Whittle who gets rid of Wilson. Wilson hit the deck. That's Kelly Wilson. Foul call. See, this is the flip side of the possession earlier. So you've got a threat like Marina Whittle who can score you know, almost at will and had a mismatch. You notice Kelsey Griffin uh, you know, realised that that's a little bit of a challenge, so came across and helped, forced uh, the ball to go out to the perimeter again, and then you're fighting a little bit of shot clock pressure as well. You've created, I should say, that shot clock pressure on the Lightning by coming to help and forcing into a secondary action. 15 turnovers to Adelaide in against uh, Benny goes nine. Mansfield just gets rid of the ball in time for Whittle. Back for Mansfield with seven and a half to play in the game. Munro. Borlase. Great patience shown from Izzy Borlase to get the two. 18 years old but playing like she's 25 and she's been in the league for six years. It's so exciting. Kelly Wilson for Griffin. Takes on Talbot. Fades away on Talbot. Can't hit it, though. Maley's there. In fact, it's Alicia Froling, rather, to pick up the crumbs. She will head to the line to shoot a couple. Well documented about how she's had to, to change hands. Alicia Froling. And her basketball after some issues, injury issues. Wouldn't know, though. No, just had the, the ball released before she was able to drive her fingers through it and fully rotate. So watch for that here. She'll probably get her balance a bit better. Mark Allen back off with a good read here. WNBL coverage as the Spirit move back out to 11 points. Munro. Mansfield. Pick and roll there with Munro was well executed. Munro and some pressure again. Kelsey Griffin coming in to ensure no easy bucket. And I think that's a great phrase. I mean, you can watch the game, and if we take away all of the um, basketball analytic or basketball speak, the, to me, there's a team that's playing to win and a team that's playing not to lose. Munro hits the free throw attempt. Both teams have been in excellent form heading into this game. Three, three wins for the Lightning heading into this one. The Spirit, though, really have announced themselves as the early team to beat. On track for their sixth consecutive win. Munro misses the second, and Griffin brings down her seventh board. Froling, Maley with five to shoot. Froling will have a look here on the left. Tough shot attempt. And again, earns a trip to the free throw line. It's going to be a fourth go at the free throw line tonight. She's four of six so far. Six and a half to play in this fourth quarter. 
Adelaide Lightning. Everything to go right now, considering well, the Bendigo spirit of playing, particularly since halfway through the third quarter. Mansfield. Looking for the pick and roll there with Munro. Didn't quite come off. Borlase has been their go-to player in this fourth quarter. Whittle steps back. Can't knock it down. Griffin has the long rebound. Wilson. And for Kelly Variety. As Ali Wilson to her right. Goes to the left instead where... Maddie was waiting to gobble it up. She's got five seconds to shoot. Kelly Wilson might have to put up the long range here in front of Munro. Good defense from Adelaide. Force the shot clock violation. That's not going to count. Saved by the bell. Mm -hmm. Kelly Wilson very hesitant to put up that shot. It's thanks to some tight defense there from Adelaide. Timeout is called with five minutes and 44 seconds remaining. This timeout is brought to you by DIY Blinds. To fit out your home with Australian-made designer quality window furnishings at the best prices, head to DIYblinds.com.au. You can order some free samples there as well at DIYblinds.com.au. So what do you want to see from Adelaide out of this timeout, Mark? Well, you've got to disrupt a losing pattern, right? So there's got to be a roll of the dice of some kind because uh, you haven't been able to eat into that lead uh, and then... Continuing down the same path, the margin will stay in a, in a similar sort of um, one that it is right now. So maybe it's a change of defense. Maybe it's a uh, you know, showing a, a zone and going to a man or showing a man and going to a zone. Um, I would be trying to speed them up with you know, some type of trapping, whether it's with the inbounders defender and the, the person that's guarding the ball um, on inbound situations. There's different things that you can do just to try to change the tempo of the game and break rhythm, but most of the rhythm of the game holistically has been in the spirit's favour. Um, so it's that disruption, I think, um, that becomes important. Uh, the pace of play will allow them to be able to get back into the contest, but the ball looks like it's stopping and it looks like it's just such hard work to get to you know, the tip of the rim or to get the type of shot that they want within their offense, whereas the spirit within two passes get a layup. Uh, it's, it's almost like uh, the lightning are climbing uphill right now. Yeah. Inbounds pass there with Izzy Borlase, who's got the 11 points. 12 each for Bell and Munro for Adelaide, 10 for Talbot. Here is Borlase, who lost control. And he... Oh, so here, one referee pointed the other way, and then the other pointed the other, and we went with the ladder in the end. It'll be a Bendigo ball. Only Wilson forcing the turnover there. Bendigo in position A, as they have been in... A, all their games so far this season. That's a carry. From uh, Ali Wilson, who just lost a, a handle on the sporting. Ball A's, beautiful recognition, terrific dish. From Borlais to Munro. She's one athlete that hasn't hesitated. She continues to play to win and she's putting her team in a position where they can have a little bit of a crack here. Back under 10 points. Griffin feeds Maley. And a big game. Annalie Maley in the first half. What a rejection from Munro. Again, another shot clock violation. Strong defense from the Lightning. And that is a big team lifting defensive play. And they finished so well against Southside. So they've got the ability to uh, score in bunches and finish this last well, just under five minutes uh, off, especially from the offensive end. Great pass inside for Borlays, who kicks it out for Bell. She hits the long range. And the Lightning now have their tails up. Big triple from Kirsten Bell. She's got 15. Now the pressure on Bendigo. Ali Wilson draws the contact and will head to the line. 
will be good to see how the Spirit respond. They've not been challenged like this in a game uh, as yet, and I believe yeah. this is the highest placed uh, team on the WNBL ladder that they've played against. So how do they go if there is some scoreboard pressure applied late in the game here? Yeah, they've had a terrific season so far on the scoreboard. The Bendigo Spirit wins over the Flames, the Fire, the Flames, the Lynx and the Capitals. But you're right, big challenge here against the Adelaide Lightning. And we're giving them something to think about. Ali Wilson connects with the first free throw attempt. She knocks down the second. Big game tonight from Ali Wilson. Mansfield for Munro. Talbot. Great defense from Maley. Straight up in the cylinder. It certainly hasn't been all Steph Talbot's way tonight. It's a great defensive stop by Arnold Maley. Showing just how much of a well rounded player she is. Talbot finds ball A's. She has seven to shoot now, Talbot. Spins on Maley. Beautiful recognition out to Munro, who knocks down the mid-range two. They're still in this. Smart play, passing in the direction of the help defense. Griffin, Kelly Wilson. This is where, does fatigue come into it? This starting five for Bendigo has played a lot of minutes. Offensive foul is called. Adelaide get the ball back. It's a critical possession coming up. You can see the renewed enthusiasm within the Lightning roster. 76 to 70. Remember that Bendigo led by as much as 11 a couple of minutes ago. Mansfield, oh, the pick and roll was on with Munro. Kicks it all the way out. Ball lays. In and out and in and out. And Griffin comes up with a loose ball. Atmosphere and Mildura gone up a notch. Bendigo being challenged. What have the ladder leaders got? Kelly Wilson kicks it out. Kelsey Griffin is fouled. She will go to the line and shoot three free throws. Or will she? Oh, after the shot. Overhelping defense from Izzy Borlase on that particular possession. So when you're in the corner and you're guarding the player there, it's not generally your responsibility to help on anybody that's driving to the basket. Often that comes from the split lines of the defender that's furthest away. Four of six so far tonight. Kelsey Griffin from the free throw line. Make it four of seven. And going at 50% from the free throw line so far this season, KG. Maybe just had a foot in the line, so just the two free throw attempts. So a seven point lead now for Bendigo, but three minutes is a long time in a game of hoops. What have the Lightning got here? Mansfield for Borlais. Bell. It wasn't, it was Borlais who put it up. Bell was calling for it on the left. Spirit come up with it. Kelly Wilson for Maley. One on one with Talbot. Back out for Kelly Wilson. Griffin screaming for it underneath the rack. Gets to her and then Bell comes up with a timely hand. It goes out of bounds, but just the five seconds on the shot clock here for Bendigo. And the Spirit want you to switch defensively in a lot of their actions. It plays actually in their favor when you do so. So you saw that last possession. We end up with Izzy Borlays on the taller uh, Kelsey Griffin at the point of the rim. And it puts you in a really tough position defensively. So when KG gets that catch, your whole defensive line in front of the ball is 80% beaten. And it's a really hard way to play. This timeout is brought to you by Aussie Hoops, the program which has had its biggest year to date. Over 42,000 participants registering to a local Aussie Hoops centre nearby. Aussie Hoops is the perfect introduction to the world of hoops 
for kids aged 5 to 10 years of age. Whether your little one is a seasoned basketball fan or simply looking to get out there and give it a go, we've got no doubt they'll have an absolute ball of a time with Aussie Hoops. So register now at AussieHoops.Basketball to kickstart your kids' basketball journey. How have you seen Adelaide being able to get back into this contest, Mark, over the past uh, couple of minutes? Um, look, well, I mean, they're, they're digging defensively, and I think the, the threat of them being able to uh, get to the rim and then they've got three-point shooters throughout you know, the entirety of the lineup, um, that becomes really, really important if you're able to try and bridge this gap, especially something like a seven points. If I'm... Nat Hurst, I'm talking to Lauren Mansfield and Kirsten Bell about if you see time and space and you've got a three-point look, that ball's got to go. Um, Izzy Borlase is generating a lot of um, defensive pressure when she's going to the rim. So as soon as she's looking to put something to the bounce or even Steph Talbot, it can come back out to a shooter and they can knock it down. Three seconds to shoot. Have they run out of time again? Another shot clock violation. That's the third in this quarter. Just unaware of the shot clock there on that occasion, the Bendigo Spirit. Now Adelaide can reset from their backcourt with 2.20 to play. Tough inbounds pass from Munro, but Talbot accepts. And the ball in the hands of one of the shrewdest point guards in the business, although they've turned it over. And it's in dangerous hands with KG23. Costly miscommunication. Griffin on the fast break gets the two. And it's now out to that nine-point differential. Griffin has 28 on the night. Borlase comes through. Couldn't hit the uncontested layup. Wilson and Munro have a tangle there. Referees interject. Here's that turnover. And considering the game she's played tonight, Kelsey Griffin, the last Bendigo player Adelaide won the ball in the hands off. Mansfield. Wallace. Munro. Oh, she's done it again. Griffin forces the turnover. The pass was perfect for Ali Wilson. It was knocked out of her hands. But once again, Griffin the burglar comes up with the steal. A genuine match winner. 28 points, 10 rebounds, 5 steals. And that's not counting all of the little deflections that she'll yeah. get that just disrupts the ball or force you to do something else that's perhaps not what you intended. She's played a mighty game. Kelsey Griffin, has she got another basket left in her to take her tally past 30? She gets it from Wilson. You should go herself. Ten on the shot clock. Kelly Wilson feeds Griffin, fades away, gets it to go. She is a star. She's put her team on her back tonight, Kelsey Griffin, and led them superbly. 30 points for KG, 23. We heard Mark Ella back off, reel off that stat line just beforehand. Came back to Bendigo for more team success and she's leading this team with a plum. Kelly Wilson joins in the party. A couple of daggers from the returning spirit players. And that's taken the life out of the lightning. Brooke hits the three. The Bendigo, through their veterans, have come up with some terrific plays in this fourth quarter. Allie Wilson misses, and then Annalie Maley, she was going for the rebound. Called for the foul. And you can afford to utilize the whole shot clock if you're Bendigo. Uh, I'm not sure why there isn't a, a greater urgency from Adelaide to get up and climb in and try to stop the game and, and give themselves extra possessions. But that works in your favour if you're the spirit and you walk it up and just get through a full 24. Bell misfires. Talbot with the offensive rebound. 
with an eight second differential now between game clock and shot clock. The Lightning got right back in to the contest late in the fourth quarter. Got within six points. Griffin and Kelly Wilson rip the game out of the grasp of Adelaide. Talbot, one of the best free throw shooters in the WNBL, connects on both attempts. You sense the spirit now. Run, run, run down the clock. The Bendigo spirit were challenged big time by the Adelaide Lightning in Mildura. The Griffin and Kelly Wilson back in Bendigo in 2022-23. Come up clutch with some big time plays defensively and offensively and ensure Bendigo's trip to Mildura is a successful one. They defeat the Lightning 84 to 75 and a high quality, entertaining, often high octane clash, Mark Alabaco. Yeah, and the spirit overcame all challenges. I mean, it goes to highlight the depth of this team, um, both in the way that you had different players carry you, especially on the offensive end through portions of the game. And we mentioned earlier, Unley Maley started like a house on fire. Uh, through the middle, we got carried by uh, Alex, uh, Alex Wilson. And then, you know, throughout, but then certainly towards the finish, the player of Kelsey Griffin, you know, got the team over the line and was able to steer them to a, another win. Um, like I mentioned earlier, just being able to overcome all of the challenges that came their way from Adelaide. For the Lightning, their takeaway, you know, you play against a genuine um, championship threat and being able to get a little bit of a, a look in at where perhaps the gaps are or the bridges that you need to cross in, in the growth within your lineup um, to be able to put yourself in contention with these sorts of teams. There'll be some great data for Coach Nat Hurst to be able to take away from this that I'm sure that they'll go and review and then be able to build from and, and give it a better crack next time these two teams clash. Having some a look at some of the highlights of Kelsey Griffin's performance tonight and the, the double-double. In a decorated WNBL career, 30 points, 10 boards, and six steals as well, including that one that uh, ended up with a, a strong transition basket. Her and Kelly Wilson have come back to the spirit this year, Mark, and, and they're playing with it with an incredible determination and, and passion that will be uh, that will certainly be inspiring their teammates. They're timeless in the way that they play the game, their ability to contribute in all facets. I mean, you see them play both ends. So for young athletes that are watching this, uh, you, know, you can see examples of what winning looks like when you can defend and get fingertips to the ball, get steals, block shots, be in the right position for your team, but then be able to make the right plays on the offensive end, even if that is for you to get to the basket or when help comes, get your teammates involved. They play the game the right way and they're a, a, as dynamic a duo as we've ever seen in WNBL history. Absolute treat to watch. Well, that was a, a strong... Uh, performance from uh, from Adelaide for a lot of the game as well against tough opposition in Bendigo. They've got a tough run coming up Adelaide. They play the Boomers twice in the next, uh, uh, over the, the coming weeks on the 18th of December then the 22nd of December. They've got two games against the Boomers and they play the Spirit again just after Christmas. We're going to find out a lot about the Adelaide Lightning. We know that we came in uh, with, with that strong winning streak. They got touched up tonight by the Bendigo Spirit and they've got some, some pretty tough opponents coming up. Yeah, but I mean, look, that's an exciting challenge for them. The path to the finals, if they are to qualify, is going to go through these sorts of calibre of teams. So it may be in ways a baptism of fire, but fantastic for their development to find where their gaps are from the team that they are now to the team that they want to become if they're going to contend for the championship. Ali Wilson signing some autographs in Mildura. That one of the best aspects of the WNBL is his fan interaction. It never gets old, and it's always heartwarming to see. Mark, uh, go put your feet up, mate. It's been a